Okay guys, Easter is finally over. I had to sit through this speech at the Easter table. So, here we go. God had his son Jesus, who had no sin, killed in our place. For the wages of sin is death. Killed in my place? I never asked him to do that. Why didn't God just change the rules? Or snap, like Thanos? Anyway, continuing. Upon the cross for six hours, bearing the burden of our sins and the sins of the whole world. He bore God's wrath, the punishment that we deserve for our disobedience. He only hung for six hours. My Sunday school teachers always made it seem like he hung up there for an eternity. Bearing the sins of the whole world? How does that work? And what is the deal with secondary atonement? We deserve the wrath of God for our disobedience? So much for that whole free will thing, huh? 53, 4-5 says, Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus willingly went to the cross for us, and just before he died, he declared, It is finished. His work on the cross for us was done. He paid the price for us, and God's wrath was satisfied. Isaiah 53 is the prophecy Christian apologists like to use, but in this you have to use context. The suffering servant is Israel, not Jesus. The price he paid for us? He set the price! If God is Jesus, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit, he sacrificed himself to himself for a rule he made and a price he set. Let's continue. In Matthew chapter 28 it says, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the, look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel looked at the woman, woman and said, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see you. Matthew states two women came to the tomb. Mark states it was three women. Luke agrees it was three women, but gives three different names. John says it was only Mary Magdalene. Mark said the sun had risen, and John said it was still dark. Matthew said an angel came and rolled away the stone. Mark said two women encountered a young man sitting at the right of the tomb. Luke said they saw two men who stood suddenly near them in dazzling clothing. And John said it was only Mary Magdalene. There's also a discrepancy between the angels, men, and women in conversation. Like Matthew and Mark generally agree the women were told that Jesus had risen and instructed disciples to go to Galilee. But Luke contains no such instructions. Mary Magdalene and uh, the other Mary were the first to whom Jesus spoke according to Matthew, but only Mary Magdalene according to Mark, and Peter and the other disciples according to the Corinthians. Matthew claims that Isa appeared before the woman and even reported to the disciples what he had found. And Mark said the appearance to Mary Magdalene was before Mary made any report to the disciples. However, John and Luke report no appearances before the women and reported an empty tomb to the disciples. Which disciples went to the tomb? Peter, according to Luke, Peter and John, according to John. Did the disciples believe the reports of the women and proceed to Galilee, like Matthew claims, or did they disbelieve the reports as Mark and Luke claim? In the appearance of the disciples, to whom did Jesus first appear? All eleven together, like Matthew claims, the two of them on the road, then all eleven, like Mark and Luke claim, the ten of the eleven minus Thomas together, like John said, 
to Peter and the others, like 1 Corinthians says. The story is recounted in John, and it's all premised on the appearance of Jesus before the disciples at which Thomas was not present. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all disagree with John about any such meeting taking place in the absence of Thomas. In the Acts and Gospel of Luke, the disciples were commanded to stay in Jerusalem, in fact. See Acts and Luke. In Matthew and Mark, the disciples are commanded to go to Galilee, and in Matthew they are told to see Jesus there, not in or near Jerusalem. Mark says that after appearing before the eleven disciples together in Galilee, Jesus ascended to heaven. In Mark, Luke says Jesus ascended to heaven in Bethany after walking with the disciples for some time in Luke. John says Jesus appeared to the disciples three times and that some of these appearances were near the Sea of Galilee in John. According to the Acts, disciples were on Mount Olive, a day's journey from Jerusalem when the ascension occurred, according to Acts. In 1 Corinthians, it's claimed that Jesus appeared in more than 500 witnesses before his ascent to heaven, a claim directly contradicted by at least Mark, who says the ascension occurred immediately after an appearance before the 11 disciples. That's according to Mark. There are ridiculous variations and contradictions. Some Christians claim that these variations complement each other. This is absurd to say the least, because the contradictions of missing characters, events, and places are obvious, and so-called variations only create confusion and further prove that they weren't authored by an almighty deity. This is the good news, that Christ is risen. He conquered death and rose from the grave. He is alive. When we freely believe in Jesus and trust him as our Savior, God cancels the debt of our sin and declares us not guilty. He credits us with Jesus' righteousness or sinlessness because Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. And this is God's gift to us. Hold on a second. Freely believe? What if I can't freely believe a tale like this? Jesus cancels the debt of our sins on the cross and declares us not guilty? These are the rules that he made. It's all just very circular. Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. Again, he just made a loophole. And what shape is a loophole? Oh yeah, a circle. God's gift to us is a loophole and circular reasoning. And we can't do anything to earn this salvation. We just have to believe it and receive it. I don't know about you, but I can't make myself believe things. Okay, so let's continue. We believe our sins are forgiven, our relationship with God is restored, and we are assured eternal life. This is the good news of Easter. Thanks be to God. So let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the restored relationship, assured eternal life, the good news of Easter. Oh, yeah, right. So we pissed off God somehow by sinning and broke the relationship? Didn't he know that would happen? And we're assured eternal life by believing that he sent his son, who is also himself, to sacrifice himself to himself for a rule he created that humans apparently broke, which required blood sacrifice to atone for, blood sacrifice of himself to himself for humans. Yeah. Remember, it's all most likely bullshit. Anyways, thank you for coming by for my Easter Rewind party. And always remember to forge your own path and wear Crocs a lot.